Hello and welcome to Stitching with Cindy Bats. Today we're going to talk about a cute little summer pot holder. Now I bought this really cute mermaid um, material as a fat quarter from the Dollar General and they had this really nice um, scale type waves ocean color um, also. So I was impressed and happy and bought some fat quarters. Now having two different fat quarters I was able to get two sets of two so four pot holders out of two fat quarters. I also used some flannel and some um, Instabrite I believe is how you say that. I always have a hard time with that. So just a cute pot holder, great summer little gift, summer um, project and with Mother's Day coming up, depending on what fabric you choose, could be a cute little Mother's Day gift also. So I cut mine at eight by eight. So I was able to get four of um, squares out of each fat quarter. And because I used two different fat quarters, I was able to get eight squares to make four pot holders. So this is really cute material and I was able to practice my free motion quilting. Now for me, I am not the best free motion quilter and I am still definitely practicing. I have a lot of um, places where Oh, I'm not quite as balanced with my free open space or I might have a point or a crossover and my machine tends to act up once in a while. Here's a crossover. So I chose to make mine in the method where I have my Instabrite, you know, that metallic covered in, um, batting for heat resistance and my flannel but I don't have my back of my quilt sandwich because I don't necessarily want people to see um, my quilting if it's not um, the same um, color. Here the thread color is very close match and you're not going to notice all those little things that are you know imperfections. So that's just something that you might want to consider if you're still practicing your free motion quilting is to attach your back without quilting, quilting it okay. So here I have my square and I trimmed off the, trimmed off the extra um, batting and I've made a little bit of a tab, just folded um, a rectangle in half, then folded those raw edges in so it's a quarter of the size it was, and I just attached it in the corner. Now, if you attach it all the way here at the pointed part of the corner, you are going to have a lot of bulk there to turn around. So what I do is I usually just take my finger, my thumb, and make a... Um, measurement that way nothing fancy and then I just turn this over like this and pin it there and then I'm able to just sew it and not have all that bulk in the corner okay so that's just a little trick there then what I do is I take my um, piece and again I like to use the matching fabric so the matching thread onto the fabric so you really don't see any mistakes in the free motion quilting unless you're really looking for them and most people wouldn't um, be looking for that they don't um, have that knowledge of what's good free motion quilting and what's not like if you cross the line are they going to point that out it, typically not unless they're another quilter and then hopefully they have the grace to know that you're learning you're practicing and what's the big deal all right so this is directional fabric and so is this so when I put them together I do want to make sure that I have the direction the way I want it all right now if you put it this way you know it's not the end of the world but I did want my scaly things to go um, like they were her scales of her of the little mermaid's tail there so it's just a matter of pinning that or clipping that together and sewing now because I'm going to be turning this um, right side out I want to use a little bit wider than a 
fourth of an inch seam. I chose to go a little bit wider. As you can see here, it's not a fourth of an inch. It's more like a half. Now that's up to you, but I like to give myself a little extra, a little extra sewing room. Okay. And that helps when you go to trim your corners. You're not right on top of your seam. You can leave a little bit um, of extra there so you don't snip your seam, but you do want to trim out your bulk, especially if you're using the um, double layer of the flannel and the Instabrite. Um, it does get quite bulky. And as you can see here, what I've done is staying in my seam allowance, I've trimmed that out. So this is the spot where when I sewed it, I left the opening and I trimmed that out so that when I turn this inside out and fold it back over, I don't have that bulk in that, that section. All right, so then all you do is just turn this right side out. We'll do that real quick a minute. And after you've um, gone ahead and trimmed out those corners, you will find that it's a much easier to get a nice, um, nice shape in your corners. It's not as um, wild and funky there. So let's just turn this out inside out. These are a nice practical gift for someone and I find it's good practice for that free motion quilting. Now if you wanted to draw lines and just do regular quilting on it, that's fine. If you wanted to trace a stencil, that's good too. Um, it's just a nice way to feel like oh if I make a mistake I didn't waste my $12 a yard quilt store fabric and um, you know it, as you practice things you do make mistakes things aren't um, maybe a hundred percent like you wanted them so here's our our little handle thing as you can see it, it pops out nice now some people use a little chopstick. Some people use that little purple thing. Um, you can use an unsharpened pencil, something to really get in that corner and push that out. Again, since you've trimmed that, that does help with getting a nice corner. Okay, so here's our spot that we left open in our seam. And again, we trimmed that out so that's not super bulky. And all you're going to do is on that seam line is fold that back. You're going to take your clips and clip that in place when you're happy. You can iron it and press it. You can finger press it and um, line it up real nice and do your top stitching. Now I usually use my quarter inch foot and do my top stitching that way. So it's a cute little project. I hope you have fun and practice that free motion quilting. Um, I know sometimes stencil work following the line can be, you know, a little challenging. Again, it just takes practice. Um, but you can do a lot with your stencils, make flowers and different things using different shapes, um, combining them. And um, this is a cute, inexpensive way to practice those quilting skills and to have a nice little Mother's Day gift or, you know, teacher appreciation, end of the year gifts, um, giving the teacher something homemade, something um, practical and something they can use, doing that summer motif for the barbecues and things, great idea. So thank you for stopping by and happy quilting. Bye-bye now. Please like and share. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.